If you like to run barefoot or bare naked or 100 miles up a mountain through the night like a crazy person, that's cool. Get weird with your workout, just not with your protein. Organic Fuel from Organic Valley has 26 grams of organic protein and zero weird ingredients. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why y'all so happy? Hey, you don't know. Charvette Mitchell is on the radio. It's time to get motivated, excited, and influenced. And influenced. Why? It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, live from Richmond, Virginia. And now, here to motivate, excite, and influence you, Charvette, Charvette Mitchell. Well, hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, broadcasting from the capital city of Richmond, Virginia. But guess what? Heard all across the world, wide web. Hello, hello. Hey, dolls. Hey, Jen. Thank you so much for joining us here for another phenomenal show. And I am telling you what? The virtual green room is loaded today, and we are excited to be kicking off another show. Thank you so much for all those that are are joining us in on uh, the chat room and those that are hanging out on the phone lines. Hey, I'm waving. We see you. Thank you for those that are coming in from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Charvette.com, and, of course, all of our broadcast stations. We thank you, and we love you guys. As always, this is what I want you to do. Go ahead and jump on your social media. Tell them what you're listening to. Send them over to Charvette.com. Share the link, all of that good stuff, and say you need to be listening in. This show is off the chain. And so let me let you know, the first segment, I am telling you, my guest is hanging out in the virtual green room. I'm going to be bringing her to the mic momentarily. Uh, I love featuring artists and having an opportunity to talk to dynamic artists. And we are excited because we have Margaret Bell joining us. She's an international gospel and jazz singer, over 25 years in the music industry, has traveled internationally, has lived internationally, oh my goodness, performing. Uh, She has had the opportunity to share the stage with many, many great people. Uh, We certainly have to mention uh, that she has performed with her sister, gospel recording artist Vanessa Bell Armstrong, but also Whitney Houston and Carly Simon and B.B. Winans and Luther Vandross and Michael Jackson. And listen, it goes on and on. And she's a Dove Award winning songwriter uh, and has a brand spanking new single that is dropping, that's dropping. We're going to let you all hear it. And I'm telling you what, we are excited uh, about Got to Keep Moving. And listen, you're going to hear from Margaret Bell in just a second. But i got to let you know about the second segment. We are really tickled pink, as my auntie from Millersville, Georgia would say, (laughs) to feature Carmen Booker. She's an attorney, a business consultant, and an author, and she is joining us to talk about, she has a lot of books, y'all. We're going we gonna to hit on the last one, which is about entrepreneurship and kingdom, uh, and I'm telling you what, you don't want to miss it. She has other books, such as Discovering Your uh, Spiritual Gifts, Seeking the Face of God, Your God's Masterpiece, God's Mentoring God for Women, You Are Called to Greatness, Biblical Entrepreneurship, and Entrepreneurship is is for you. That's just to name a few. She's been featured uh, in several Christian magazines and all of that, and so we're going to be hearing from her in the second segment. So let's go ahead and jump right on in, bring my guest up uh, to the virtual mic right now, Margaret Bell joining us. Thank you so much for being with me here on the show, Margaret. Oh, you're so welcome, Charvette. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Oh, it is my honor, and so I love, like, let's let's have the listeners just get a little inside, uh, behind the music, I like to call it, type interview, Uh and so you have certainly uh, a a long uh, history and background in music. You started singing in your father's Pentecostal church at the age six, right? I sure did, that's right. Wow. I did, did standing, you, up <laughs> standing up on a chair. Standing up on a chair. And did yeah. you know then that music was really, you know, your gift or was it a thing of, okay, I have to do this? Well, you know what? My, uh, being the sister of Vanessa Bell Armstrong, I mean, you know, those are some big shoes to follow uh, after. And when we were younger, she did all of the singing, you know, in my father's church. Okay. So one day my dad just said, you know, I want my baby girl to sing a solo. And he actually made me do it, and it was so funny. And a few years after that, my my sister kept telling me, "You sing through your nose, you know. You, you got to learn how to sing correct, girl." Uh-huh. <laughs> ah. 
And so I was thinking, well, maybe it's not my calling. I don't know. But <laughs> but as the years went on, I, I mean, I really grew to, to love it, just to, whole, to love singing and just the whole yeah. performance of art. I just love it. And I knew that that was what I was called to do. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, and then you, you went on through life and uh, had the opportunity to attend Oral Roberts University, and you were one of the ORU singers that we saw nationally televised, uh, you know, on broadcast. Yes. And so what was that experience like? You know what? That was amazing. It was a little frightening. That was the first time I had ever been away from, from home, you know, coming from Detroit, Michigan. Uh-huh. And Oral Roberts University is located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So here I am, yes. you know, trying to be a big girl on campus, and um, I pack my things and I go. And the funny thing was, to have that position, it was a, a full scholarship to be one of the singers. And they were saying, oh, that wow. in order to have this position, you had to be able to read music. Well, I didn't know how to read music. So wow. I went, the musical director was in on it, though. He knew. Uh, he said, okay, no problem. You have a great ear. So I would get into rehearsals. And um, I would have him, I would act as if though, you know, I'm stumped by a note, you know, or two. And I'm thinking his name was David. I was like, David, would you just play that for me? Would you play that alto part for me on the keys real quick? And he would play it one time, and I would have it. I would commit it to memory. So then when it was time to go back to pretend that I was reading, no one knew that I didn't know how to read music. <laughs> so oh, it was my a God. great, great experience. <laughs> Helps us where we need to be helped. Absolutely. He Absolutely. He okay. helps us. Wonderful. And so uh, then you, you've had also experience uh, with Broadway musicals. So uh, don't get God started. You have the lead role in that. How is Broadway different than maybe some of the other things you've done? Well, you know, actually, it wasn't, it was, I was the understudy for the lead role, and the lead role was actually my sister Vanessa. So uh, okay. it was. Yeah, it was it was phenomenal. It was a, a great experience, and, and it was so funny. I can remember hearing when Vanessa was out, and it was time for the understudy to go up, and she, she was out quite a bit because she knew that I could handle the part. And she was right. where I would listen to the audience, and they would do that whole, you know how they do that whole announcement thing, Char- Charvette, where they say, you know, the lead role is going to be played by the understudy, you know, <laughs> Mark <laughs> Bell. And you can hear, you know, in the audience going, ah, you know, this great disappointment because everybody had come to hear Vanessa. And I never will forget when that curtain went up, and I'm thinking to myself, you know what, it's do or die. You know, you've got to yeah. win the audience over. You've got to give 110%. And I went in full, 110% every time. And I would hit that first note, and I could hear the whole audience calm down. And, and they were fine throughout <laughs> the rest of the show. <laughs> Like, listen, I know what I'm doing. (laughs) We got you. Oh, wow. Exactly. And and, yes, yes. And so, uh, with uh, with that, and then you've also uh, had a lot of opportunity uh, within the world of of jazz. You you traveled the world singing jazz. Mm -hmm. And so, was there any. Um, conflict or struggle of saying, okay, I know I grew up Pentecostal, but jazz mm-hmm. is where I'm really feeling things. Did you have to any struggle with that? You know, Charvette, actually, I did not. Um, well, in the beginning, in the beginning, it might have been a thought. I was thinking, you know, now how God, how am I going to make this transition? You know, because my heart belongs mm-hmm. to you, um, and everything I know is gospel and God, and you know, He defines me. And so I said, well, Lord, you know, how do I do this? Because I actually felt a calling. I felt that I was supposed to go out into the nation, you know, with the message of love and peace that God had given me and reach those people that may never go, you know, to a church. And that was my calling. And I had, it took a moment for me to accept that calling because I always knew that I was just a little different, uh, you know, than my peers. And then when I came yeah. into that knowledge that, okay, God, this is what you want me to do. This is, and everybody's calling is different. And this was my particular calling. And, and he told me, when I got the call from Morocco, that was the first um, experience with jazz. And he asked me to come over, the um, A&R guy over at the hotel, he asked me to come. And I said, um, okay, absolutely, I will come and I, I will sing jazz. I got there. It was, it was amazing, amazing. But Charvette, when I tell you, because Morocco is a Muslim nation, 
When I got mm. there, as I began to sing my jazz song, it was amazing to me that the people would come up and ask for, Oh, Happy Day, or oh, His uh-huh. Eye is on the Sparrow. You see? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I said, okay. I said, okay, God, I see what you're doing. And I never will forget, before I left Morocco, one of the workers came up to me and said, Margaret, there is a light that is shining around you that makes people want to be with you. And I told him, that is the light of Jesus Christ in my life. Yeah. That's what you see. So, yes. Yeah. It, it was, I, just, yeah. I made that transition, and I just went right over to jazz, you know, and I haven't looked back. And haven't looked back. And I love how God is so, we put him in a box, but he is not in a box. So he can show no, up in mm-hmm. anything. He can yes, show he can. up everywhere. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes, That's yes. Right. Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, listeners, if you just tuned in, hey, we see those that are just joining us. Welcome uh, to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. We're here in our first segment, our artist spotlight, talking to Margaret Bell, international gospel and jazz singer. Uh, listen, listen, listen. We're excited getting ready for this new new single. Let me let me go ahead and let's get that in now. Um, so let's okay. talk about. What's getting right? And I know we're counting. You're just days away from the release. So tell yes. us about Got to Keep Moving. <laughs> I sure yeah. will. I absolutely will. So that, um, I'm really excited. I'm excited about September 30th, and that's the digital release all over the nation and abroad. Um, I wrote that song, Shavette, when I was in a time in my life where I was very stagnant and uh, I didn't think that I didn't feel like things my my like my life was moving forward. You know, I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people have actually experienced that at one time or another in their lives. You know how you get the promises of God and and, and it seems like they're not coming true and you're just stuck in a rut and then you're in the same place yeah. and time is moving on and you're getting older. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. Thinking, oh, just celebrate the birthday. You know so I know. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> And so you think, you know, okay, well, it's surely it's too late, you know, for my hopes and my dreams and my goals, you know, to happen. You know, it's too late for it to happen for me. So I'm just going to do nothing. You know, I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to let it go. I'm going to give in. No. I felt like that at one point in my life, and then I heard the Spirit of the Lord tell me so clearly, Margaret, you know, my promises are yea and amen. What I told you I was going to do for you, I'm yet going to perform them. But what I need you to do is keep moving towards the mark. I need you to keep moving towards the goal. And at that moment, I could just hear the lyrics just begin to just fall down from heaven. And I began to put pen to paper, and I started to just write what I felt, you know, in this song. And it came up, got to keep moving. And it's a song of encouragement um, and hope. Encouragement and hope and we know we need this. Uh, United States needs this, and the world needs this. And so where will people be able to get a hold of it after September 30th? It, it will be available on iTunes, Amazon, Google.com, um, on all of the, the, the digital sites that you can think of. It's going to be available on 800 different digital sites across the world. Oh, so wow. if any digital site that you go on, you sh- I should be there. I'll find you there, and you'll find me. <laughs> All right, Margaret Bell, gotta keep moving. Uh, and listeners, don't worry, we we have a sneak peek. We're gonna let you hear it a little bit a little bit later. You just gotta just gotta stick around. All right, okay, well, and so mm-hmm. yes, don't don't move. We want you to we want you to hear it. And so uh, I, I've got to mention some of the you know just some of the so interesting things, so many interesting things you've been able to be able to do and experience and so mm-hmm. um you were the special guest vocalist for John Travolta's fiftieth birthday party in Cabo. Yes. How was that? Yes. You know what, Charvette, that was absolutely amazing because I'm gonna tell you, you know how we have those little bucket lists uh-huh. <laughs> in life. You know, things we want to happen, you know <laughs> before you yeah. call our name. Okay, I had one. And on my bucket list it was to be able to sing a duet with Gerald Levert. Oh. Now, okay, so now here I am, the special guest soloist at John Travolta's 50th birthday party in Cabo St. Lucas, and I'm uh-huh. thinking, we're getting the music together, and we're getting everything together. Next thing you know, 
what am I doing? I'm singing a duet with Gerald Levert. Oh, so wow. that I know. I mean, it was amazing, and I, I got a chance, to, an opportunity to be able to sing with Patty Austin, Roberta Black, Natalie Cole. We all got up there together, and we gave a rendition of a song or two, and it was just amazing. It was just a, a, it's one of the highlights of my life to be able to sing with such greats, and to be able to get that duet in with Gerald Levert. Oh my goodness! Now that that is that talk about life coming together and God ordering your steps and and just letting Amen. letting all of that fall together. And uh, well, That's and right. it doesn't stop there. You you shared the stage with Lenny Kravitz for uh, Robert De Niro's seventh seventieth birthday celebration. Whoa! What was that? Like? <laughs> yes, I did, girl. <laughs> That's honey. Girl. That's like hold on to the vapors. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh my! God. Oh my goodness! Yes, that was an experience, and it was a it was a great experience. Uh, Lenny is he's a phenomenal person and a phenomenal talent, as everyone knows. Um, and the next thing you know, I found myself up there with him, um, joining in on one of his his tunes, one of his songs. Uh, at the birthday party, and we just and we were there having a good time, just performing and singing, and everybody was singing with each other, and um, that that was my experience with Lenny. But he's a great person, great person. Oh, okay, so that's that's good. No no sad stories to tell you guys. No 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 horror no. stories to tell you guys. All good over it's here, which love. is good. This is not shock shock <laughs> over here. Love. So this all is good. Love. This is okay. good. <laughs> now right. I, I do when you spent time you know in uh, you spent time two years um and and then you you lived in france what is it what's how is it different internationally versus in the states you know with any you know jazz any music you've been able to do how what is how is it different internationally well you know what what i find is because in the united states we're so saturated with uh, music, good music, and good musicians, and good vocalists, you know, uh, I think sometimes we become laxed, or, you know, we kind of take it for granted a little bit, but I find that overseas, over in other countries, um, where it's not so plentiful, you know, they have a, a longing for it, and an appreciation for good music and good talent, you know, unlike any other, so, I mean, they receive you with open arms. Uh, and it's just a, it's a beautiful thing it's a, to feel that appreciation, to feel that, okay, hey, you know, they're sitting here, they're listening to me, they, they want it, uh, you know, they're into it, and they really, really love it and appreciate it. So, yes, it, it is different. I'm not saying that, the, you know, the United States, they don't appreciate good music because, of course, we right, do. We know right. good music. But it's just that when you can't find it so readily, um, mm-hmm. you, you tend to appreciate something more. That's all. Wow, that that that's awesome, uh, and I'm so glad you had that experience. And then that, that might be inspiring for those that are listening, you know, up and coming artists or they're aspiring to be artists. Uh, hey, you know, the international market don't leave them out. Uh, that might oh, be an area you want to consider. Yes, it's a great experience. I think everyone, if you get an opportunity to do that, to do so, you should do it. You should take it. Take it. Margaret said, take mm-hmm. the opportunity. <laughs> there That's you go. right. That's right. All right. And so you write. You are a songwriter, not just you know singing, but you are a songwriter, dub award winning songwriter. <laughs> uh, did the singing come first? Did the songwriting come first? How? Which which order did it, did it come in? You know, um, I would have to say that since I I started singing when I was six. Um, and that was my first, I should say I didn't start my singing career, but that was my first little solo at my father's uh-huh. church. Um, but I think after that, I started to write, because I used to love to write little stories and, and different plays, you know, with them. I had like little notebooks that I would do all this writing in. And I'm thinking that they were all poetry, uh, and they, indeed they turned out to be songs. And first, In fact, I can remember the first song I wrote, um, and it was like, I shall not. I should not I could not Absolutely will not Leave the Lord All <laughs> that right was the first song I wrote When I was yes. 14 <laughs> uh-huh. And I've been writing ever since I've been writing ever since So now, do you get like a 
like inspired by something, and then you, and that's something God, but sometimes life events, a, a movie, mm-hmm. nature, and then you sit down and it's like, boom, I got a whole song, or does it come in pieces? Um, a lot of times, Charvette, my songs will come in my sleep. Okay. Uh, and I had to learn how to deal with that. Yes, I had to learn how to deal with that. The Lord would actually give me songs in my sleep. And I would be so sleepy. You know, honey, you sleepy. You really sleep at 3 or 4 o'clock <laughs> in the morning. You know, you, yes. you, you know, you, you turn it over a few times, you know. <laughs> and you're not ready to yes. go. Yes, I know I am. So my hand I is raised. Say, yeah. Exactly. So I would, I would say then, you know, okay, well, I, I hear it. And when I wake up at about 8 or 9, then I'll record it, you know, and I'll, I'll finish it. I'm telling you, every time I'd wake up, the song would be completely gone. I had no oh. recollection of it whatsoever. So mm-hmm. I had to learn the hard way. I've lost a few good songs that I'm, I'm praying and hoping that God would bring back to me. But I learned that when God gives you something, you get up and you make it happen. You record it then. And then you go and get back in the bed and go to sleep. But at least you <laughs> have it when you get up at 8 o'clock <laughs> to write it, you know. So I had to learn the hard way. So I learned that way. So now I'm very sensitive to the spirit, and um, I'll wake up and do what I need to do. Mm-hmm. And say, God, I, I hear you. I got it. I got this. I, I've got this lesson. This is not. This is. I, I got the. I got it down packed now. Uh, exactly. So, uh, shout out. We God, have, I was like, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I learn that lesson. I don't have to relearn that. Uh, I have a Absolutely. shout out from uh, Facebook. Pam Perry uh, says, I love her. I love her. Thanks for listening, oh, Pam. I know Pam, Pam is in Detroit. Too. Yeah, Pam love Perry, you, thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, and so do you Do you write? Uh, you certainly have written for other other people. Is it easier to write for yourself, or how does that kind of go? You write a song, and then you kind of decide, okay, this is mine, or this is going to be somebody else's. You know what, I write a song, and sometimes, well, most times I write a song for myself. And then after it's, com- it's completely finished, um, you make the decision of whether it really is for you or not. Um, most times with my situation, I've written, and then others have heard, I'll demo it, and then others will hear it, and then they'll ask for it. They want it. So that's how I've been able to get my song on others' projects. Um, that's how that happened. Wow. Okay, and uh, can you tell us a few uh, people that you've worked with from the songwriting standpoint? Oh, absolutely. Um, B.B. Winans. Um, I've written a song for my sister Vanessa Bell Armstrong's project. I've written something for C.C. Winans. Um, I've written something for Michelle Williams from uh, Destiny's Child. Yeah. B.B. Winans. <laughs> That's just the name of you. So God is good. Name of God is good. Yes, God is good. God is good. And so yes. your so we we've, we've got the single coming September 30th dropping and are you working on a full project? Is that shortly coming behind that? Yes, it is, Charvette. I am definitely in the studio. Well, actually, I'm in the studio as we speak. I'm um, working on uh, the completion of that project. So we just released okay. it. We're going to release that single on the 30th and then the pro- the full project will follow. And you know what, since you're a songwriter, it's probably, this will be my guess, is that you probably have too many songs or a whole, whole lot, and you're trying to figure out, okay, Girl. what needs to go on this project. <laughs> Girl, that is the gospel truth. Yes. Yeah, I knew I was that on it. Truth. That's exactly how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, others Absolutely. that don't aren't songwriters usually are kind of looking like I'm still like they're like I'm still looking for that one or two that's gonna really hit it. But usually mm-hmm. songwriters, mm-hmm. y'all have songs written on napkins on the on the side <laughs> of the wall on the refrigerator and all these journals and notebooks. <laughs> and that is the truth. That is the truth. That's exactly how it goes. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Phenomenal. Tell listeners uh, as we as we begin to wrap up, and listeners, we're going to let you hear um, uh, "Gotta Keep Moving" by Margaret Bell. We're going to let you hear it so you all can go get it on September 30th. Uh, how they can connect with you online and any of your connection and contact points? Oh, absolutely. Well, all of my handles, as the young people say, the Instagram <laughs> and the Twitter is, is Margaret B. Sings. And that's my Twitter and my Instagram. And uh, for bookings, you would actually contact me at back, and then the number two, back to back PR. 
at hotmail.com. All right, great connection points. And I have also tagged on uh, Facebook. Uh, so facebook.com uh, slash Charvette. Facebook.com slash Charvette is a great connection point. And then also uh, twitter.com slash Charvette. I have uh, tagged in both places. So if you're following me okay. there, those are just easy connection points. Last question for yeah. you. The goal of my show is to motivate, excite, and influence. And mm-hmm. what continues to motivate you? I'm sorry, what motivates me? Yes. Oh, all right. Uh, the drive to succeed and to actually please the Lord, to be able to reach those goals. And so I'm just here actually just to encourage, as I said before, to encourage you in whatever plight that you have going on in your life in terms of things that you want from the Lord, things you want the Lord to do. It's never too late. Stay encouraged. Stay the course. God's got you. All right. Well said. Thank you, Margaret Bell, for stopping Mm -hmm. by and us being able to just grab a few minutes with you. And much success on your release. Thank you so much. Thank you, Charvet. Thank you. God bless. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right, listeners, we're going to let you hear right now. Got to Keep Moving by Margaret Bell. Pick it up September 30th. Make sure you get it. All right. Make sure you get it, okay, on the drop date. Here we go.
moving. Margaret Bell, pick it up. Uh, Gotta keep moving. September 30th is the drop. So listen, we're going to a quick commercial break, and then we're going to be back um, to our second segment. Uh, my guest is hanging out in the virtual green room. I'm going to be bringing, bringing Carmen Booker up to the mic. She's an attorney, a business consultant, and an author, and she is here just to give us some nuggets and all that. I'm telling you what, it's about, it's about to be Oprah's life class right up in here on the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. So don't you move. We're going to be right back. It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Charvette will be back after this. Diabetes is a killer. After I was diagnosed, I didn't feel sick, so I didn't listen to my doctor. Then it struck. I had a heart attack, then a stroke, and I was only 49. Two out of three people with diabetes die from heart disease or stroke. Call 1-800-DIABETES for your free diabetes survival guide. Choose to live. It's not too late. Don't let diabetes destroy your life. A message from the American Diabetes Association and the American College of Cardiology. Spiritual Food for Thought, 31 inspirational quotes to jumpstart your day by LaTanya Boyd consists of inspirational messages that offer daily words of empowerment, promote spiritual growth, and development in the Lord Jesus Christ for your day-to-day living. Spiritual Food for Thought, 31 inspirational quotes to jumpstart your day. Available now on Kindle, ebook, and paperback. Log on to www.latiboyd.com. Does your church or ministry have a website? Are you a local artist or author that has an established web presence? If you answer no to any of these questions, you're letting countless opportunities pass you by. Hi, I'm Charvette Mitchell. Mitchell Productions was created with your needs in mind. We will provide you with stylish and economical online marketing solutions. From email marketing to your own website, Mitchell Productions caters to ministries, nonprofits, small businesses, and special events. Check out our portfolio at Mitchell-Productions.com. In today's world, a website is not a luxury, it's a necessity. And Mitchell Productions can create your website in a stylish manner at a very economical price. Don't let business, customers, or new congregation members pass you by. Visit Mitchell Productions today at www.Mitchell-Productions.com. Let us showcase your organization to the world. She's here to motivate, excite, and influence you. She's Charvette Mitchell. Charvette Mitchell. It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show with in-depth interviews from today's leading authors, gospel artists, stars that you want to know about. And now, Charvette Mitchell. All right. Welcome back again. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, broadcasting from the capital city of Richmond, Virginia, but heard all across the world wide web, and we're moving right on in to our second segment uh, right now. My guest is hanging out in the virtual green room. I'm bringing her up uh, to the mic momentarily, but we are really excited uh, to have Carmen Booker joining us, attorney, business consultant, author, founder of Wings of Love Women's Ministry. Listen, she has over 22 years' experience uh, writing contracts, business plans, forming business entities. She is a business attorney and the chief consultant for CompuPerfect Professional Services, uh, and she has many, several books under her belt, uh, such as Discovering Your Spiritual Gifts and Seeking the Face of God, and You Are God's Masterpiece. Christian Mentoring Guide for Women, You Are Called to Greatness, Biblical Entrepreneurship, and I'm telling you what, the list goes on and on. And we're just excited uh, to have an opportunity to feature Attorney Carmen uh, here on the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. I'm bringing her up to the mic right now, live on the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Hello, Attorney Carmen Booker. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to be on the show. Yes, we are glad to have you. And listen, I got I got tired just reading the list of books that you 
have written, and I didn't even cover all of them. Uh, but so we we, we just want to uh, kind of have a get to know you type interview. And uh, so let's start off with certainly law and uh, you know that area of focus. How when did you first uh, discover you know hey I want to go into uh, into law? Well, it really wasn't my choice per se. It was I was uh, kind of influenced and. Uh, strongly encouraged to go that way from my dad. Oh. But I've always loved business, and I majored in economics and law in um, college and minored in English. And then he suggested, well, why don't you consider law school? And initially I said, no, no thanks, not interested. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but I, I, I took him up on the challenge. He gave me the challenge, and I, I met it. So I'm so glad I did go to law school, and I'm an attorney. I no longer practice. But I am a business consultant, and I love yeah. what I do because I help people realize their dream of starting and man- managing a non- managing a business. Phenomenal, and uh, you certainly, with with your background, are able to help people kind of get set up the right way from the very beginning, right? Yes, definitely. Yes, what I do specifically is I establish corporations limited liability companies. We also write and review contracts such as partnership agreements, real estate, entertainment, any kind of contract we do. We do trademark registrations and write business plans and establish a lot of nonprofit organizations and help nonprofits get their tax and status and get funding. Wonderful. And have you seen over the years that, um, you know, this the opportunities that are available, do you feel like there's more opportunity? Has the, have the opportunities grown? And for people that are have a, a passion to do something, should they jump in and, and get started now? Yes, there's a lot of opportunities, and the opportunities have definitely grown. As a matter of fact, home-based businesses have uh, probably quadrupled in the past five or ten years. So people are seeing the importance of that and really following their passion. There are a lot of people who are fed up and frustrated with their jobs, and so they're looking into alternative opportunities to fulfill their dreams and also earn some income. And have your own home-based business is a part of that. As a matter of fact, I've written a book called Biblical Entrepreneurship. Okay, so let's talk about that because uh, some people might say, well, biblical entrepreneurship, what does the Bible have to do uh, with, you know, entrepreneurship? So please help clear those thoughts up <laughs> if anyone okay. has those. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, Biblical Entrepreneurship is a workbook that I uh, wrote uh, several, a couple of years ago, and it's designed to solve the problem of not knowing how to start a business, and it's really a comprehensive guide for starting and operating your business in an efficient business. And the first step is seven steps, and the first step is how to obtain a vision for your business. And I truly believe that when you get your vision from God, that success is guaranteed, because God's not going to give you a vision that's not going to manifest, it's not going to be successful. That's not going to be great Amen. because God is great and he can only produce greatness. So that's the number oh, one. Y'all need number to tweet two. that and give attorney Carmen Booker the credit. God is yes, not going to give you a vision that is not going to manifest. He's not going to give you a vision that will not manifest. It's going to manifest. Okay, that's good. Yes, yes. And you're going to be successful because the vision that's God given will be successful if you follow the leading and guidance of God. And number two is how to hear from God, because in order for you to manifest your vision, you got to know, well, what, what shall I do? What are the steps? One, two, three, four, mm-hmm. five, and mm-hmm. on down the road. So the key is to have a hearing ear, develop a hearing ear, and that comes with reading, studying, and meditating on the Word of God. And also, the step three is how to overcome obstacles. I believe there are two major ob- obstacles that people experience, the fear of failure and the fear of rejection. So oh, the key yeah. to overcoming those is faith, having faith in God's word, because faith trumps fear. Faith Except trumps forward. fear. Yes. Yes. That's faith good for this election period too. I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> faith <laughs> trumps fear. I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And step four, I talk about the different types of business entities which are uh, corporation, limited liability companies, sole proprietorship, and partnership. So I go into great detail about those and the benefits of each one and the advantages and disadvantages. And how to develop a business plan, because a lot of people have 
thoughts and ideas, but they really don't know how to uh, put that into an action plan. So your business plan is really an action plan that you should write, review, and refine as time goes on. Okay, so, so I'm glad you brought that up because of yeah, and it's because you can start out with the business plan, and then five years from now, um, you probably need to be looking back at that and making updates. Exactly, definitely, because your goals are going to change over time. Your strategies are going to change over time. So those are those. That's key. So that's what that biblical is entrepreneurship cool. is all about, and a lot of people don't realize the importance of tithing. Oh. Yes, the income yeah. that you. To give ten percent of your income uh, toward the house of God, and, we can, and when you do that, you're opening up the door of blessings to come flooding and flowing in your life. Amen, amen. So you all have got to pick this up. How can they get a copy of of Biblical Entrepreneurship? Okay, they can go to my site, which is www.kbooker. The letter K. B O O K E R dot WordPress dot com, and they'll see the book cover Biblical Entrepreneurship on the right um, panel, and just click on that cover image. It'll take you to an information and payment page. All right, quick and easy. Now you have another book that's called Entrepreneurship is for You. Yes. And so, what is that one um, about, and how is that different from the Biblical Entrepreneurship? Okay, the Entrepreneurship is for You. Is has the same basic information as biblical entrepreneurship, but it's mm-hmm. not from a Christian biblical perspective. And it also contains an entrepreneurship self-assessment survey and the 38 best home-based businesses that you can start. With this 38. Catering. Yes. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. So that is great. If someone's saying, "I I know I need more income, different income. I'm not exactly quite sure." What I want to do, I'm probably kind of good at a couple things. Get mm-hmm. this book and look at that list of 38, and you are giving yes. them some really good, clear direction to go in, right? Yes, that's right, definitely, yes. Wow, and so how can they pick a copy of that up? They can go to the same website, uh, www.kbooker.wordpress.com, and they'll see the Entrepreneurship is for You cover on the right side panel of the site. Just click on that. It'll take take them to an information payment page. All right. And you actually have a book signing that is coming up. Yes, Uh, I do. Yeah, tell us about it. Well, I'm going to have a book signing on October 2nd from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at Living Well ABC Store in Silver Spring, Maryland. And I'll be selling the Biblical Entrepreneurship book there and also Discovering Your Spiritual Gifts. Okay, so you'll have both of them available. Yes. All right, so listeners that's in the Maryland, Silver Spring, D.C., Northern Virginia, P.G. County, Baltimore, I'm throwing all of y'all in the pot. Uh, (laughs) Check out Living Well, uh, 2004 Cherry Hill Road in Silver Spring, uh, Maryland. And um, the good thing about meeting the author at a book signing is that you get your book signed. (laughs) <laughs> and the address is you get your book signed. It's 12004 Cherry Hill Road, Silver Spring, Maryland. Okay, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, and so uh, with all of the books that you've written, um, do you have a certain passion around any particular ones that you're, you're saying, you know, I'm really trying to focus on these and, and get these out to the masses? Yes. Uh, one that I just mentioned, Discovering Your Spiritual Gifts, is uh, one I really like to get out to the masses because a lot of people are experiencing frustration because they really don't know what their God-given purpose in life is. So this book is designed to help them discover what that really is so they can experience fulfillment and joy and peace in their life. Okay, so how does the book help someone get to that kind of awareness? Because it helps them to identify what their passions are, interests. It helps to helps them to analyze their personality type because I go into mm. the four personality styles and we talk about what exactly are the spiritual gifts, maybe exhortation, teaching, um, prophecy, things of that nature. 
And there's also a spiritual gifts test in the very back of the book that they can take and actually find out what exactly are their spiritual gifts so they can begin to use those spiritual gifts in ministry and help other people. And so this is really good because I think this is something that, like, everyone that is a Christian, everyone that goes to church should do. You know, oftentimes people just think, well, I'm not a preacher, so I don't, I'm don't. i not really worried about spiritual gifts or I'm not a singer. But really, everybody needs to know what their gifts are, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you can have the gift of crafting, hospitality, leadership, mentoring, Prayer. Mine is gift. One of my gifts is teaching. I, I enjoy teaching and writing, and I'm an exhorter. I love encouraging oh, other people. So we all working this thing out together, and we and we need everybody. <laughs> we need all parts of the body uh, to be operating uh, functionally. And as you just mentioned, that there are a lot of people that are frustrated because they. Uh, don't know their gifts, or do you find that there are people who maybe they know their gifts, but because of lack of other people now operating in their gifts, they have been put in positions to kind of fill the holes, but it's really not their strong suit? Yeah, you can find it a lot in small churches where a lot of people mm-hmm. are not coming on board and, and helping, um, but it's unfortunate. But they still have to make the decision for themselves. Are they going to continue to do it or just follow what their passions are, what their spiritual gifts are, use them? Because they're going to get frustrated, they're going to get tired, and the zeal of life can be taken away. And yes. that's not good. And so, yeah, yeah. And so it, I think it, it's the, the ownership is on each one of us to figure out um, where our spiritual gifts are and then operate in them in your local assembly. <laughs> operate yeah, and in, in the community. Them. And in the but community. My, That's a good point. Yeah, because yeah, this is not just about for the four walls of the church. Exactly. Going beyond the four walls and operating in your community to help transform the lives of individuals and therefore your communities. But That's I tell you what, if they get this book, if they if buy the book, Discovering Spiritual Gifts, there's, they will indeed discover what their spiritual gifts are so they can discover start implementing them and using them. And then they themselves will be blessed, and they're going to be blessing other people. So it's a win-win situation all around. It's a win-win situation. So there there you go, your personal invitation. Um, now, I do have to definitely mention, um, we've got to talk about Wings of Love Women's Ministry, WLWM, and um, it's a ministry. You have more of an online atmosphere uh, for uh, where women of abuse can find healing and spiritual growth. And so how did you get started with Wings of Love Women's Ministry? Well, initially I had a ministry that was just a general ministry, but back in 2010 God put in my heart to target and help women because I realized that a lot of women have low self-esteem because of how they've been treated, whether by friends, uh, significant others, family members. So a woman can come out of that, can be empowered and come out of that situation. And Once they discover who they are in Christ, that they are fearfully and wonderfully made by God, they are God's masterpiece created by him for his glory, and they have a God-given purpose that he wants them to fulfill. So that's the whole purpose of Wings of Love Women's Ministry. We, we basically help a lot of women who have experienced uh, domestic violence abuse. And have overcome it. We help them to overcome it, become victors rather than victims. Yeah. And uh, we certainly we're right up, running right up to October, uh, which is uh, many things are, are <laughs> awareness. But yeah, domestic violence awareness is month of October. Purple uh, mm-hmm. is the color. And so, if there yes. are people listening saying, "I really want to help," um, you know, how can I help? Uh, do they have ways to donate or help in their community? Well, uh, Wings of Love Women's Ministry is a membership-based site, and they can go to my website, which is womendestinedforgreatness.wordpress.com, and to learn a lot more and how to become a member. 
Because All their right. benefits for becoming a member is only fifty dollars for the year, and we also support um, Christian ministers, Christian authors, and Christian businesses. Because I have a radio show called Blossoming into Your Greatness, so they can be a guest on the show. Oh. Uh, they can also uh, donate to the ministry as well. So many ways to support. So there you go, listeners. You can you can plug in and and. Uh, be of help, and so uh, you do have a, a book called Christian uh, Christian Mentoring Guide for Women. Tell us a little yes. bit about that particular book. Okay, well, this is it's really a resource for those who desire to mention women or who are currently mentoring women, and it focuses on methods for the mentor and mentee getting to know one another, and it's an eight-week mentoring guide included in the book. That pertains to planning and preparing for the uh, mentor and mentee uh, relationship, sharing together, discussion topics that can be used, and starting a women's ministry. It has a lot of resources such as exploring your God given gifts, um, a spirit um, given gifts questionnaire, and women's ministry forms are also contained in the book. So it's pretty comprehensive. Another phenomenal resource. You are just a person of resource, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> uh, right, Attorney yeah. Carmen Booker. You are just resourceful. Thank you so much. It's God. <laughs> yes. Thank God for him. We thank God for God uh, who gives us uh, all of these resources. And if you um, stop by um, the website, there's a great page, listeners, of affirmations. Um, so those are a lot of people, whether you're, you are a Christian or not, recognize the power of um, affirmations. And so I just want to call out uh, when you stop by the Wings of Love Women's Ministry, um, the website page, uh, there's a great page for affirmations. So make sure you um, – and you don't have to be a member to see the affirmations. You can, you can see those. Um, and so wanted to call, call that out. Uh, since we had some people that just tuned in, I want you to shout out again your um, book signing that's coming up. Okay, yes, I have going to have a book signing on October 2nd at the Living Well store in Silver Spring, which is located at 12004 Cherry Hill Road in Silver Spring, Maryland, from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., so that's this Sunday. And I'm looking forward to being a blessing to other people. I'm going to be selling two books, Biblical Entrepreneurship and Discovering a Spiritual Gift. All right, there you have it, your personal invitation again. And how can uh, listeners connect with you online, on social media? Okay, well, they can definitely connect with me on Facebook. They can type in Carmen Booker and also Wings of Love Women's Ministry. I have a group, Facebook group on on Facebook. And also on Twitter, Carmen Booker with a K. And they can also email me at my email address, which is kbooker. 533 at gmail.com and they can definitely call me at 301-408-1082 all right and i have tagged uh tagged her on facebook facebook.com slash charvette if you're already connected and following me that's an easy connection point it's a public post so anyone can look at it and grab the information for attorney carmen booker uh, and I, I definitely have to mention your daughter uh you have let you know this entrepreneurial spirit uh you know rub off on her and so talk a little bit about her business okay certainly my daughter's name is ruth booker and she has a company called Ruth's Craft Shop, and she crochets hats and scarves and makes sick floral pots. And you can go to her website, which is ruthscraftshop.com, and learn more about her and see pictures of her products. And definitely you can buy through her online website shop at ruthscraftshop.com. And she's making these items by hand. That's right, yes. Yes. How does she get into that with the crochet? You know, that's a that for a young person that is that's a different, you know, a different uh, spin because that, you know, that <laughs> may seem like an older person would do that. How did she get into that as a younger person? Well, her grandmother taught her how to crochet and and as a matter of fact, my daughter taught me how to crochet, so I helped her in her business. So that's how she got started. But she started this business at the age of eight with just the silk floral mm. pot and um, crocheting scarves. And then we also added hats later on. So she started at a very young age, but she's 
20 years old right now. I'm so proud of her. Oh, I definitely wanted to give her a shout out, a uh, shout out right there. And so, well, thank uh, you. definitely, yeah. yes, you're welcome. And so, for those that are, have listened to you and said, you know, I really, um, I need to get in contact with Attorney uh, Carmen and, because I'm thinking about starting a nonprofit, and um, seems like she has some resources. You know, I want to get my 501c3 tax exemption. Um, where, uh, where can they go to get, you know, either some blog posts, some resources? And um, talk to you about kind of that that nonprofit status uh, for their their nonprofit. Okay, they can go to my nonprofit site, which is nonprofit tool vault v a u l t tool vault dot com, and they can also call me at three zero one four zero eight ten eighty two. I'd be more Wonderful. than happy to and- talk to them. More than happy to talk and get you in the right direction. And you have helped a number of um, nonprofits and not for profits get set up and established. So, and it's definitely one of your niche areas. So, if you're listening yes. and you're saying, Oh my goodness, that's me. Now, can we give them maybe like three quick tips if there is someone who either is starting or maybe they have already started? Maybe they've been doing it for about a year or so. Uh, you know, being in the community and, and giving back and all of that. Maybe three quick tips you could give them um, to kind of get steer them in the right direction. Okay. Uh, yes, the first tip is to have a vision. Get your vision from God and continue to read and study and meditate on the Word of God so that you can get leading and guidance from God because when God leads and guides you, you'll never fail. You'll never fail in life. And make sure that you know and discover what your spiritual gifts are. And you will indeed discover what your spirit, your God-given purpose is and live a life of love, joy, peace, and fulfillment. All right. And that spiritual gift is important because if, you, if you're, if you you're not, like I know one of my spiritual gifts is administration. Well, okay. if someone, if, if administration is not one of their spiritual gifts, and then they kind of struggle with kind of all of the details of business and, and, and keeping records and books, they're struggling with that because that's not their gift, then they kind of know, okay, well, this is an area I need to outsource or I need to exactly. ramp up on. That's yeah. right. So that's how you use your spiritual gift. Whereas somebody else who may say, well, I'm in administration, but I'm not very good at hospitality, well, that converts to customer service. So then you may have to work on your customer service skills because hospitality doesn't come naturally to you. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's how you use that, listeners. That's that's what you do. That's how you use that. All right, well, my last question for you that I love to ask all of my guests, uh, the goal of my show is to motivate, excite, and influence, and we want to know what continues to motivate Carmen Booker. Well, knowing that I'm impacting the lives of other people, that I'm helping them and encouraging them, that's what motivates me. Well said, well said, and we have a shout out from Facebook. Oh, you're welcome. We have a shout out from Facebook. Uh, author Latanya Boyd has uh, been just commenting uh, on the post, and uh, so yes, yeah, she said yes. It's important to know and understand your gifting, gift of teaching and, and exhortation, and all of that. So thank you, thank you for listening in, Author Latanya Boyd. Great. Well, thank you so much again, Attorney Carmen Booker. We wish you much more continued success with your book signing and all of your your endeavors. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. I'm so glad I was on the show. Yes, we're glad to have a have a chance to feature you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, right. Oh, you're welcome. All right, listeners, uh, that is going to wrap up today's show. Uh, I'm telling you what, you want to go to charvet.com and you can uh, check out the bios and contact information for all of our guests. Uh, certainly pick up Margaret Bell's uh, single that dropped September 30th. You got a chance to hear it here. Got to keep moving. Pick that up, pick that up. And then certainly uh, those in the Maryland, D.C., Northern Virginia area, uh, check out Attorney Carmen Booker's uh, book signing. And then, of course, all of the links that were shared during the show of different connection points go there. 
Uh, I do have, I do have a coming up next week. I'm uh, kicking off a four week group coaching program uh, for those that are entrepreneurs and they're saying, you know what, I know Facebook, I know I'm, I can get uh, customers from Facebook, or I know that people are making sales on Facebook, but I just don't know what I'm doing and I don't have time to figure it out. Listen, I can help you. Uh, go to joincharvette.com. Join Charvette.com. Um, you can sign up for the four week uh, group coaching program by live webinar. You'll get to see me. You get presentation materials, and uh, it's going to be amazing. Join Charvette.com. Four weeks every Thursday in October, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern to 9 15 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and I want you to join me. And there's some bonuses that come with that. There's some bonuses. You also receive uh, a free course, a free e-course on how to pre-schedule posts on Facebook. That alone you want to kiss me on the cheek for because that's going to save you a bunch of time. Uh, You also get uh, a free course, free audio course, five things you should be doing on on social media right now. And then this is the next bonus. You get a free ticket to my live event here in Richmond, Virginia on Saturday, December 10th. It's my pop-up workshop, hashtag coaching with that. You may see online, pop-up workshop. You get a free ticket to that. Uh, Female entrepreneurs uh, from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. We have panelists, we have speakers coming from all, from, oh my goodness, from Maryland, from New York, from Charlotte, North Carolina, Uh, And I want you to be there as well. So to find out information just about that event, go to heygirlhey.biz, heygirlhey.biz to find out about the workshop. But the four-week group coaching program, that's open to everyone, female, male, everyone. Uh, But I want to tell you those bonuses that you get when you do sign up for that, uh, and it will help you uh, maneuver and manage uh, Facebook so that you can sell more products, get more customers, sell more books, get more speaking engagements, and you don't have to spend a whole year trying to figure it out. I'm going to tell you and help you in the four in the four weeks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps us up. Thank you so much for being here with us. We're going to see you guys later. Bye. Live from Richmond, Virginia, you have been listening to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Connect with her at Charvette.com. And until next week, stay motivated, excited, and influenced. The Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Signing off. Record better audio anywhere with Motive Digital Microphones from Shure. Easy-to-use options like the MV88 plug directly into your phone or computer and include a free app. Create studio-quality sound for podcasts, music, and videos. Visit Shure.com to learn more. If you like to run barefoot or bare naked or 100 miles up a mountain through the night like a crazy person, that's cool. Get weird with your workout, just not with your protein. Organic Fuel from Organic Valley has 26 grams of organic protein and zero weird ingredients. 